is, you know, what is a derivative? Well, basically what a derivative is, it's a way of finding the instantaneous rate of change. And when you hear the word rate of change, what that means is referring to the slope. So let me draw a diagram here for us. So basically what we have is something that looks like this, okay? We have a curve, for example, right? And we have two points on the curve. Let's just say right here and right here. Now, if we go down to the x-axis, okay, this is gonna be x, this distance right here is x. And if we go up to our function, this point here is gonna be x comma f of x. Okay, so when you put that x value into your function, you get out the y value or the f of x value, right? Now, if we go a little bit further to the right, okay, let's just call this distance h. Okay, so you're with me so far? That means over here, we're going x plus h, okay, x plus h, and if we go up to this point on our uh, graph right here, we've got x plus h. If we put that into the function, the output or the y value is f of x plus h, okay? So all we've done is we've just written this in a real generic way, but what we have is we have two points on our curve, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the slope, okay, between those two points, okay? Now when you find the slope, remember your slope formula from algebra, it's y2 minus y1, over x2 minus x1, right? That's our slope formula. In this case, it's gonna be f of x plus h, okay, that's that y value, minus f of x, right? Divided by x2 minus x1, so that's gonna be x plus h, okay, minus x. And you can see here that the uh, x plus h minus x, right? You can see that the x's are canceling and we just have h in the denominator, right? But now let's take this a step further. So what we're doing right now is we're actually finding the slope between these two points, which is the average rate of change, okay? It's this average slope. But you can see that anywhere along this graph, the slope is constantly changing. Like here, okay, it's at an angle like so. Here, it's a little bit less steep. Here, it's even less steep. Here, it's even less steep. Here, it's even turning around and going the other direction, right? So what we're doing is we're finding a formula for the instantaneous rate of change, okay, the slope at any point along this curve. And the way we do that is we introduce limits, and it's the limit as h approaches zero. What that means is as this distance right here gets smaller and smaller and smaller, this point here, in effect, is moving along this curve until these two points are right on top of one another, and that distance is zero. And so what we're getting now is we're getting the instantaneous rate of change instead of this average rate of change. So what you're seeing right here, and let me just rewrite it a little bit, is this is the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. This is referred to as the difference quotient. Difference, remember, is subtracting. Quotient is dividing, so altogether they call this the difference quotient. But when you get to the end of pre-calculus, beginning of calculus, they start to refer to this as f prime of x, which is the derivative. So don't get confused by the, uh, the word derivative. It's really just a formula for the slope of the tangent line, okay, the line that just barely touches that graph at that one point, and it gives us the instantaneous rate of change. So let's get into uh, a basic example now. Say, for example, your function is like this f of x equals x squared. Okay, so we've grown up uh, as we've gone along in math and we know what f of x equals x squared looks like. It's just a parabola like so, right? But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our derivative, we're gonna use our difference quotient to find the derivative, okay, which is a formula for the slope of the tangent line at any point along this graph. So what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and do these substitutions here. We're gonna put in x plus h, okay, squared, minus f of x, which is the original function, that's x squared, all divided by h. So if we simplify this, we get x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus x squared, all divided by h, and it's the limit as h is approaching zero, right? Now notice that the x squareds are canceling each other out, and then here we can factor out an h, which gives us 2x plus h, all divided by h, so those h's cancel, and again, remember it's the limit as h approaches zero. If we put zero in for h, we're left with 2x, and this is our formula for our derivative, which remember, the derivative is just the formula for the slope of the tangent line. So a simple example would be, say we were interested in finding the slope at the point 2, 
four, okay, right there. Okay, so we're trying to find the slope of that tangent line. Well, if we put in that x coordinate, two, okay, in for x here, that's gonna be f prime of two, which is equal to two times two, which is equal to four. And again, remember, this is a formula for our slope. So now we know that the slope is four, and it goes through the point two, four, let's write an equation of the tangent line. So that's gonna be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We're just gonna use the point slope form. So this is gonna be y minus four equals the slope, which is also four, times x minus the x coordinate of the point, which is two. And that's an equation for our tangent line. Okay, like so. Now let's get into another example about, you know, we talked about how to find it, we talked about what it is, and another example of why it's useful. So you probably remember from Algebra 2 and uh, Pre-Calculus when you were graphing polynomials. So we'll take, for example, this polynomial here, f of x equals uh, x cubed minus 4x, right? So one way we would graph this is we'd say, all right, let's see if we can factor this and find the zeros. Remember, the zeros are just the x-intercepts. So if we factor this further, we get x plus 2, x minus 2, bring down the x. If we set all these factors equal to 0, you can see what we're getting is we're getting 0, we're getting positive 2 if we set that one to 0, and we're getting negative 2 if we set this group equal to 0. And we know the leading coefficient's positive, okay, which tells us that the end behavior is going up to the right. And we know it's an odd degree, so that means it's going the opposite direction to the left. And we know the graph goes something like that through those points. But the question that students oftentimes have is when you go through these points, like how high does that graph uh, go before it turns around? Does it go way up here and then come back down here and go way back down here? And, or does it just go a little bit past the x-axis? You know, how do we find that out? How do we find those turning points? Well, what's interesting is, is that when the graph bends, when it turns, okay, say for example like this, what's the slope of the tangent line at that point where it turns? Well, you can see it's a horizontal line, so the slope of that tangent line is zero. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the derivative of our equation, and we're gonna set that derivative equal to zero so we can find the points on the graph where the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero. Okay, so we're gonna use our difference quotient again, our derivative formula right here. And so let's do that, so we've got x plus h cubed minus four times x plus h minus f of x, which is original function, so that's gonna be x cubed minus four x, all divided by h. Okay, now if I simplify this, this comes out to x cubed plus three x squared h plus three x h squared. I'm using the binomial expansion theorem here. Distribute the negative four, so that's negative four x minus four h, Distribute the negative here, that gives us negative x cubed plus four x, and uh, this is all divided by h, okay? And you can see we get a lot of cancellation. The x cubes are canceling, the four x's are canceling. And then if we factor out an h out of what remains here, we get three x squared plus three x h plus h squared minus four, all divided by h. You can see those h's are canceling, but remember it's the limit as h approaches zero, right? So if we put zero in now for h, this whole term is gonna to go to zero, this whole term is gonna to go to zero, and we're left with three x squared minus four is our derivative, okay? That's a formula for our slope. But what we wanna do is we wanna find out where that slope is zero, okay? That's where the graph is you know, turning around or bending. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add four to both sides, okay? So that's three x squared. We're gonna divide both sides by three, so that's four thirds. We're gonna take the square root of both sides that gives us plus or minus, and I did this on the calculator for us, it's 1.15, okay? Now, if we put 1.15 back into our original equation, what we get is 1.15 comma uh, negative 3.08, and if we put in negative 1.15, we get positive 3.08. So those are our turning points. So if we graph this, you can see at negative 1.15, we're gonna be up here at uh, let's see, we're gonna be at 3.08, so it's gonna be right about there, and if we're at positive 1.5, we're gonna be right about there. So that gives us a better idea, okay, of how high the graph is going and how low the graph is going. Otherwise, we're just kinda guessing. We don't really know where those extra are, those maximums and those minimums, right? So that's a, a key point, and again, you can see where that graph is bending 
or turning or changing direction, that's where the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero. So key points to remember when you're uh, learning about derivatives is, you know, what is a derivative? It's really a formula for the slope. How do we find the slope? We take these two points, okay, and we use our slope formula, but we take it a step further to go from the average rate of change to the instantaneous rate of change by using limits, and the limit as h gets smaller and smaller, it approaches zero. And then from there, once you have the derivative, you have a formula for the slope of the tangent line, and you can you know, use it in some of these applications like we talked about today. So I hope this video helped you understand what is a derivative, how is it useful, you know, and how to use it. Subscribe to the channel, check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring, and I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.